How are we doing, YouTube? It's the old nightmare cabin back. I finally got around to doing a video. Uh, this is the morning. Normally in the afternoon it gets a bit too bright. I've got a white wall out there. And the sun just beams right on it and flecks right back in here. So normally I have to do things at night. But um, I've got relatives around tonight. So I've got, that'd be pretty unsociable. So I thought I'd have a look what it's like in the morning because it's all a bit grey gray and cloudy and horrible. And yeah, I've got decent lighting. So here we go. Um, yeah, it's been a busy couple of days as well. So I've not done as many things as I'd like to have done. Uh, I'm going to be doing a Let's Talk About video. And we're going to be talking about Overkill. I've just done an article uh, for Metal Legion. So I've been listening to Overkill for the last couple of weeks. Um and it's quite a long article actually <laughs> the more the more i got going and the more i added in the history of the band and even then i still it's still pretty bare basic but even then it it started adding up and then i started getting into the music and i sort of ended up falling into a sort of track by track analysis of each album and yeah so uh poor ricardo is uh, got that email now and he's probably got to edit it down and file it down a bit. So, yeah, I'll be doing it anyway, so I thought I'll do an overkill video. I'll be talking about the first seven albums today. So it'll be basically to come inside with this box set that's just come out. Uh, you've just had a box set that's released, um, which covers the Atlantic years, 1986 to 1994. I'll be doing the first album as well as that. Uh, so, yeah, that's how the article came about. Um but yeah, to do a an analysis on Overkill, I couldn't not talk about the first album. So yeah, I'll be covering that today. So we'll be doing 1980. What was that? I said 1986, didn't I? So 1985 to 1994, I'll be covering today. So yeah, the um, the band formed in 1983 in New Jersey, um, sort of off the ashes of a punk band with uh, D.D. Verney called the Lubricants. And um, they originally formed as Virgin Killer and then eventually renamed themselves Overkill. Uh, Dan Spitz um, of Anthrax was a member of the band briefly in the formative years, but the first proper original uh, lineup that recorded anything would have been uh, Bobby Blitz, Ellsworth, um, frontman, um, guitar, uh, Bobby Gustafs Gustaf Gustafson. There you go. Got there in the end. Dee uh, Dee Verney on bass and uh, Rat Skates on the drums. Um, they put out two EPs. Well, they put out the Power in Black demo in 1983. If you can get hold of a bootleg version of that without, um, you know, having to donate a kidney, um, try and get hold of it. If not, find that on YouTube. That's well worth tracking down. And um, and a self-titled EP in 1985, which was re uh, that was reissued later on with a compilation. I think I'll get to that later. Um, <clears throat> the majority of this material, though, was um, re-recorded for the Feel the Fire album, uh, which I've got here. What I've got here is let's get this on. See if I've got a bit more. This is the uh, Field, Field of Fire and then the Fuck You EP together. So you got the um, two albums there. I can't get... I could never find uh, an edition of uh, Field of Fire on its own. Which is a shame because I think it's got such a cool album cover where it's the four of them in front of a fire and it's just the black silhouettes. So... Um, Anyway, yeah, the um, yeah that EP you get on this. So yeah, this is two CDs. You get the Fuck You EP, a um, bunch of live tracks on that, and then that original demo is on this as well. And then this too, you get the Field of Fire album. Uh, Field of Fire is a fantastic debut album, basically. It's got everything you want from a good debut album. It's got the, you know, the raw energy... The hunger of you know a band with something to prove it's just, you know a statement of intent so to speak i mean it's kind of like a fresh metal version of the first iron maiden album there's a few moments on there especially dd Dee Dee verney he, he channels his inner steve harris on this 
But a song like uh, Raise the Dead is sort of a, a classic sort of heavy metal song with a fresh rocket up its arse, really. Uh, Rotten to the Core, fantastic song. That reflects the band's punk um, influences as well. So you've got the band, they've, they've got the thrash metal core, but there's heavy metal influences, what we've known to be classic heavy metal today. And, but there's a lot of punk in there as well in the mix, um, especially with Rat Snake's um, drum beats. And I think that's more really reflected quite well on Rotten to the Core, because you've got that punk sort of drum beat, but you've got a thrash metal riffs over the top. And, um, but this is, you know, they can put it, make it, ugh, start again. One good thing with Overkill, which they do on all their albums, is that they have a fun sort of tongue-in-cheek side. Uh, Bobby Ellsworth, he, you know, he, he always gives everything with a nod and a wink. And he's always laughing as well. I mean, I've had the, I've had the privilege to um, interview Bobby back in the uh, Gully and Joe days. I can't remember if we did it once or twice. But, yeah, you couldn't have asked for a nicer guy to interview. And everything he said ended with a laugh, you know. Um, but the, as much as they can do that, they're never like a joke band. They, again, it's with a nod and a wink and with a sort of a streetwise, sort of streetwise wisdom. But they can switch and go dark and go serious. And I think that is overlooked by a lot of people. Um, and that is more on songs such as, um, think of, uh, well, the title track really, I suppose. And um, the overkill, of course, the uh, the last track on this as well. As with like Iron Maiden or Black Sabbath opened their album with Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden finished with Iron Maiden, and then that was their signature, their title song. You get this for four over the next album. So you got Overkill on this one, Overkill two with the next one, Overkill three, and then on yeah under the influence, and then you got. Um, Evil Never Dies on the fourth album, which is considered part four of that thing, although it's not in the title. But yeah, all in all, everything that's in the element, all the elements of the band's sound is present on this album, but it just hasn't quite congealed yet. They haven't quite got that signature overkill sound that's unique to them yet, but it will form over the course of the next couple of albums. Sorry, I just head me, knocked me mic there so uh next up in 1986 is it yeah that's where the uh box set starts so 87 is actually the uh album release by the way the uh band are very they're totally prolific they just putting out an album every year to begin with or every other year at least and when you go through their back catalogue three year gap between albums is the longest you've ever had and um, if it wasn't for the uh, emergency, I would, I'd have thought they'd had another album out already. But apparently they're working on one. So, yeah. Anyway, next up, Taking Over. A fan favourite to many. Um, I would say if you... Um, the pendulum sort of swings now. And it will go the other way. We'll, we'll address it when we come to it. But this... Again, the fresh metal was always the base. This, to me, is where they really lean... <laughs> where they really lean towards classic heavy metal. Um, but yeah, it basically just builds up on what the band's um, built on on the first album, but just with a bunch of touring under their belt, they um, they just become tighter. I mean, every song on this is awesome, though, but the, you, from Denied Across, Wrecking Crew, I mean, that's a, a mainstay in the band's... Um, set list today you've got the awesome riff in theory's name um amazing solos all through these albums actually by uh bobby i can't pronounce his surname again um gus <laughs> gus Stuffson. is that it i've got to try this i'm going to get this right bobby Gustafson. yeah he's fantastic on the first four albums i think he's on he's got some fantastic solo in um, fantastic melodics, um, you know, a lot of clean guitar on there as well, a lot of like, the use of acoustics. But um, yeah, every track on this is just phenomenal. Um, you've got 
electro violence as well. I think that sort of paves the way for the band violence and you know bands. Well, it didn't pave the way for bands like Exodus, but it's there's a bit of Exodus in there. And then you've got the um, Overkill Two, where that is quite an ambitious track as well. Things open up a bit, and you see how far they've come as songwriters. But yeah, like I say, it's it's, it's a fan favourite for many, and um, I think it's definitely up there. Uh, then you had the Fuck You EP, which is on this. That actually came out after that. And then um, again, more touring. I think they opened up for Megadeth. I think they did a. I think they did a European tour opening for Halloween, and then a an American tour opening for Megadeth, and then they again full steam ahead um, under the influence in 88 I believe let's quickly double check that um, yeah 1988 this is uh, my favourite album cover I don't know if, if you're a regular viewer of the channel you've seen me wearing a t-shirt of this um, again everything is just solidified and filed down even more more condensed now we're getting into the overkill sound of its you know their unique sound where overkill sound like overkill and no one else um shred awesome album opener never say never i mean hello from the gutter the main riff on that and just that awesome chorus they have a lot of um hardcore influence as well i think well, well i suppose it comes from the punk influence but they are pretty good at using the whole crowd chant chorus as well so you get that on shred dun, 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 shred you know and then um but yeah, when that awesome chorus of "Hello from the gutter," awesome, awesome. Um, this album actually, I, I made a note of this. Was um, the album's kind of in two parts, so you got the first five songs are all for like sort of four minute mark, and they're all very straightforward. They get to the point, very mosh friendly, all the rest of it. But then things start getting a bit more experimental and start sort of opening up, and s they start exploring different territory on the second half of the album so from drunken wisdom onwards drunken wisdom is a bit of a slow doomy number um end of the line is a um another one really where you got quite a big long intro and whatnot and um it got more of a darker tone in there as well the melodics in there i mean the solos on that kirk hammett would be proud of um there is one as well oh where is it there is a I think it is at the end of the line where um, they you have this blazing solo and then it sort of comes back into this like riffing section. And somewhere between the from Remember Tomorrow and the solo of Phantom of the Opera, put them two together. They have blankly nicked that. Um, I don't ever begrudge anyone doing it, but it did make me smile where it takes you back to that first Iron Maiden album which is what I said earlier with the first album. It's kind of like a fresh metal version of that first Iron Maiden album. Um, Overkill 3, Under the Influence. Oh, sorry, no, Head First. Um, awesome bass riff leading that track from DD. Um, and yet, yeah, Overkill 3 opens nice and clean and that's atmospheric before kicking into like a galloping rhythm. And uh, Bobby's vocals on that in particular. He hit some really cool high notes. And yeah, just building on the momentum, really. And then, I mean, nah, I was going to say something, but the more I thought of it, I thought, no, that's not quite right. But yeah, album number four. Um, this is where they become headliners, I believe. Um, but yeah, the uh, again, this is another one considered a favourite by many, The Years of Decay. Um, as I've said before, they just keep building, just keep building and just get better with every album. Um, they're gigging relentlessly and just becoming tighter as a unit. Um, Time to Kill, another fantastic song. I mean, back in the day as well, if you, if you go back and listen to the uh, metal show with Gully and Joe, we actually did uh, both these albums as a double whammy. So go back and um, dig that out if you can. Um, yeah, Time to Kill and Elimination um, sort of acts as a one-two punch. Elimination got picked up on um, Headbangers Ball. I Hate is catchy as hell. I'm picking up the wrong CD here, bloody hell. Um, yeah, I Hate. You know, that goes on. 
uh, cool little punk bit towards the end of that as well with the hey yo hey yo nothing to die for has a bit of an anthrax swing to it um, you get a 10 minute um, epic in the middle of this uh, playing with spiders and skull crusher oh it's worth noting as well this was produced by Terry Date and the guitar sounds on this and I'd say arguably the next album is um, what Dimebag Daryl apparently said to Terry Date on Cowboys From Hell also the first King's X album I can't remember what that first album was called I think it was out of the out of the silent planet correct me in the notes if that's right out of the silent planet the debut album by king's x and this is what the the overall guitar sound that dimebag daryl was looking for um but yeah this is another one there's not a bad track on it it just flows wonderfully and again on the later songs as well who tends to fire yeah great song nice uh, sort of doomy number if i remember rightly um, you get more, you're starting to get elements of groove in this as well. There's some real good chunky parts in this as well, which the band would later embrace, sort of in the 90s and whatnot. But um, I'm just trying to think of, uh, I'm trying to think of, uh, yeah, Who Tends to Fire? There was the, um, it's kind of like an acoustic track, really. It's mainly just clean guitar sort of backed by keyboards and Bobby singing and it just goes to show again what a great singer he is um, he sort of you know I think a lot of people sort of think of him as just a guy that sort of screams in a, in a, as a typical thrash front man but no the guy can you know he can um, strip it down and um, just sing over acoustic song it kicks in towards the end as it always does with these things but it's a uh, it's a cool track. It's different. It's something different for them. And then you've got um, Evil Never Dies. Um, opens up with some really cool guitar effects. And some sort of weird feedback. But then kicks in and builds up. And it's got a bit of a start stop structure to it. But um, yeah. Cool album. Closer. So uh, let's one more time. Let's try and uh, pronounce his surname. Um, Bobby Gustafson. Here you go. Um, he leaves the band after this um, it gets pretty bitter between them to this day even um, it doesn't sound like they're on good terms um, I don't know but um, basically everything that builds up the band have just built up with every every uh, release so far to build this classic it's all come to this now, a lot of people say the band never recovered from Bobby leaving the band. Um, I don't fully agree with that, but I would say they do hit a bit of a... Mm, they hit the ground running on the next album, but then they find themselves in a bit of a slump. But um, that's not... They would probably would have hit that with if Bobby was still in the band, because every other band went through it. So, I don't know. You can debate that amongst yourselves. So... What do you do when you put out a classic album and then lose a key number member? You replace him with two new members and put out another one. So next up we've got Horoscope. Let's get that book out so you can see the uh, artwork a bit clearer. Yeah, it's a bit better. Get the old light on that. No, all you're going to do is glare. Okay. So, uh, pretty cool album cover this actually. Now, this, to me, is the band's masterpiece, in this era, anyway. Um, I mean, I think this is one of their best albums. I mean, it's every track on this, it, it, it's like Rust in Peace. It's like Master of Puppets, Rain in Blood. A band just comes together at one point and just hits the bullseye, and they're just firing from all cylinders and just play a perfect game from start to finish. And I think this is one of those albums, I mean... Where do I start? I mean, Coma, just, it, it just, you got a cool little introduction and then it just hits the ground running. And just every song infectious, blood money. I'm the war man killer. I'm a man. Um, yeah, it, it kind of builds up and, you know, you've got good 
it's just a collection of great songs horoscope as well so everything's fresh and good up until that point and then you get and then the band's black sabbath basically just comes out that's such a doomy atmospheric dark song i mean it reminds me well it reminds me mainly of sabbath but um i could see queen's right doing a song like doing a decent cover of horoscope at some point uh new machine fantastic song cover of edgar winters uh frankenstein i always thought that was fucking mad i always i just thought it was an instrumental to begin with i just thought it was them and then um i think i was like listening to planet rock one day and i heard frankenstein and i never quite um i remember seeing like an old clip as well of um of them doing it on top of the pops or something like that old gray whistle test something one of those old shows and I never quite put the two together that it was a cover. It only the the penny only dropped recently that it was the same song. But um, yeah, I don't know why they could have done without it, I suppose, and just made it like a ten track album. But it's a bit of fun, I suppose. It didn't do any harm. But um, yeah, they do make this song their own, I guess. But yeah, I I think it's just fantastic from start to finish. It's a ten out of ten album for me. Um, I'm just trying to think of anything else I could say. It's again, it's, it's everything just comes together from the production to the the songwriting to the performance. Everyone is on form, you know. Everyone's on fine form, really. Um, nice day for a funeral as well. That goes into a sort of deeper like groove as well, which again, a lot of bands would go on to embrace in the nineties. I think Overkill had as much a hand in that as on anyone else. A uh, nice day for a funeral and uh, solitude as well. I kind of joined as the sort of outro of the song becomes the intro to the next track. But that's quite a qu melancholy track for um, Overkill's standards, really. But um, cool album closer. But yeah, this is the uh, the peak for me. But everything that came before it is is just as essential. It just builds up to the this to the momentum that this album has. Um, right, next up, I Hear Black. Now, my good friends at um, Worship Metal, every so often they put out an article uh, where they uh, sort of champion an underrated album or an album that's um, sort of berated by the public and they reassess it and kind of fight its case. And, um, yeah, Chris Jennings, he's been on the channel. It might have been him that um, done that article, actually. I'm not sure. But it was someone from Worship Metal. But yeah, nice try, guys. And it is a really good article, but I, uh, it made uh, fair play to them. And they always make me do this at Worship Metal. They always make me want to check something out. Whenever they put out a list, I will always find something that I either haven't checked out before or never even heard of. So I always discover new music with them. And yeah, as much as I don't agree with the uh, how this is an underrated album... It did make me dig it out and give it another try. So I think that was the main point of the um, article. So job done. But yeah, I just... Uh, just when you... like, What I'll do, I'll compare it. like Because it's the same lineup. And it's the same time length. There's like a minute difference between these two albums. But this album... This album flies by. Effortless listen. 52 minutes over in a, before you know it this is 53 minutes and it just drags it fucking just goes on and on and on and it's just it's on a clunks and plods along and you've got these weird riffs you know it's just you know it's just there's 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 no get up and go on this album i think it's very it's very stodgy it's very um bloated it's i don't know I don't know what they were thinking on this one. I think you just they were just trying to do something different, I suppose. Oh, we've got a new drummer on this. I forget to... Um, I did address it, I suppose. But um, you've got two new guitarists on uh, Horoscope. You've got uh, Merrick Grant and Rob Canav Canavano. Uh, one of them was the guitar tech for the band, and the other one was in Faith for Fear. So, yeah, two new guitarists on that. I did mention it. I just didn't mention their names. And then on this album... Oh, shit. I forgot to tell you about the dr new drummer. 
Um, you got a new drummer on this album. He's uh, still in the band at this point, but then um, you got another new drummer. So you had Sid Falk on drums, who was in um, Battlezone, Paul Diano. And then on I Hear Black, you got another new drummer, Tim Malaya. So we've got a new drummer. All right, so it's not the same lineup. Fuck it. But I, I ain't going to blame this on the drummer. The, the drummer, in fact, opens up on a track later on. There's, a, there's an album, there's a track later on where things finally start to pick up. And it's like, oh, the drummer is there. I feel s sorry for him on it. But um, Shades of Grey is a pretty good song, I suppose. I mean, it's kind of grungy, kind of 90s, you know, got a bit of a 90s rock to it but, it, it, but again it, it builds up and builds up and when it gets to where it wants to go it's pretty cool uh weight of the world is the one as well that we start to get a bit more freshy again and yeah tim malaire gets a chance to open up on the kit but um it's just not a very good album can we be honest about that it's uh i suppose they needed to make it in order to you know i don't know one thing with um is the difference between someone like Overkill and Metallica. You would have got that as a new album, and then that would have been the album you had to listen to for five years until they made another one. But with Overkill, because you got an album every other year, or every other, you know, every year, a year later, two years later, three years is the longest you've had to wait for a new album. If they do put out one that's not quite up to scratch, it doesn't matter, because you always get another one afterwards. That was always uh, Motorhead's... Um, yeah, that was always in their favour as well. If an album wasn't quite good, it, you, you never had that much time to dwell on it. Unfortunately, when they put out a fucking awesome album, it, you would get another album before you, the rest of the public kind of had a chance to catch up as well. But um, anyway, I digress, as I normally do. So next up, we've got um, 1994. I'm just going to check the lineup, make sure. Right, so we've got the same lineup now. And this is WFO. Wide fucking open is what it stands up for. Stands for. Now, if you mentioned earlier, I said that um, pendulum swinging. So on taking over, the band really goes into their heavy classic heavy metal influence. With fresh metal always being the basis. The pendulum swings right back round the other way now to the punk influence. And the band really embraced... Like, the, the, we're, we're back to thrash metal, first off. So straight away you've got... Uh, what's the album opener? Where It Hurts. It's like, right, cool. And that just... That's the palette cleanser. That just blows all the cobwebs. See, like the album cover, it's just like a load of fucking demonic cobwebs. This just goes... <laughs> blows through that. It's like, right, overkill it back. And, um, but there's a lot of good songs on here. There's a lot of uh, crowd chanting. Da, 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 ba, da, 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 there's a lot of singing, some choruses. And um, so it has like a bit of an agnostic front. A lot of stuff on here actually reminds me of Life of Agony as well. But the production on this and the way the riffs are played, it's very gritty on this album. This is very sort of street level album. And there's a, there's a kind of, for this time of year, it's kind of grey and overcast. It's not raining, but the pavement's always wet and it's miserable. And you've got three layers on. This album kind of captures that atmosphere. It's a very workman-like album. It's an album to listen to while you're at work. If you're in a van or you're on a site, this is a good album to listen to at work, if that makes sense. And... Um, yeah, it, it's got a gritty, hardcore, punk feel to it. And it's, it's really cool. And there's good songs on there. I would say, like, um, like Fast Junkie is a really good song. The Weight, New Highs and Lows. Um, it's an up-tempo song, but it does kind of uh, drag in places. They Eat Their Young is a really good track as well. Um, Supersonic Hate is another great track. Uh, you've got a nice little instrumental, um, R.I.P., which is uh, dedicated to someone, if I remember correctly. The, uh... 
yeah, that's um, yeah. RIP is dedicated to Chris Oliver um, from Sabotage, a great guitarist. Um, Hole of the Mountain King, I think, was uh, his masterpiece. Um, what's the track I'm trying to think of? Bastard Nation. Yes, Bastard Nation. Awesome song. I think the Dropkick Murphys would have done a good version of that. It has that that feel to it. Really good sort of main... It's more like a rocking riff. Kind of think, think like the Almighty or something like that. But really good... Uh, really good uplifting feel good song um which let's just say on a dull gray miserable day at work you'll li listen to this while you're at work but you'll listen to bastard nation when you get to the pub at the end of the day i think that's a good way of like, summing it up so uh yeah that was uh we've got to the end of the first era really of the band um, or the area I've just covered and I had to do an article on so I thought I might as well just do a let's talk about but yeah Feel the Fire awesome debut album everything the band's potential is all displayed awesome debut album classic thrash metal album some people I, I've even seen comments on YouTube saying this is the best thrash metal album ever easy but awesome album not a bad track on it yep yeah, keeping up the momentum on these two net tracks, I think this is the best of the four. Oh, I'm tired actually between taking over and this. I really like Fill the Fire as well, though. Oh, don't know, can't choose. I think this is the uh, creative peak. Um, bit of a slump, not too keen on it. Band finding their feet again. This doesn't fix everything, but there's certain there's certain faults on this that are still present here but it's a much much better the um they're well along the way to cleaning up the mess on this one but um yeah seven albums we've got um you can't go wrong if you are new to overkill and you're sort of using this as a guide that box set the atlantic years 1986 you get six albums for something like 22 pounds so you can't ask for a better place to start um i'll be doing I won't be doing it next, but next I will be continuing this. I'll be doing a part two of um, Overkill, and I'll be doing this one next. The um, I'll be working my way through this box set, and this is uh, 1995 to 2007. I'll do that, and then I'll do a part three, which picks up with Ironbound, Ironbound up to present day. So I'll be doing a three-parter. On Overkill. Um, one thing to check out as well, though, while we're talking about these albums, uh, live in Overhausen. This is a Blu ray and a double CD. Is it double CD? Can't remember now. Let's have a look at it. Yeah. Ugh. Double CD. Shit. And, um, and a Blu ray. Awesome concert. Really cool. Live shot there. Um, and they do horoscope. And fill the fire in full. So a long ass set. Uh, 22, yeah, so they do horoscope in full, fill, fill the fire in full, and then they finish with fuck you at the end. So there you go. Uh, 21 song set in total. Well worth picking up. And uh, yeah, just about covers it. If you've uh, made it through to this, thanks for watching. If you're a regular viewer, welcome back. Thank you as always, and if you're new to the channel, this is your first video, welcome aboard. If you could uh, just help the channel out and um, just give us one of them under there and consider subscribing if you so desire. Um, up next, I'll be doing the uh, Son of the Endless Night. Uh, this album came in a post yesterday. I've listened to it this morning, but I'm going to give it a few more spins to fully digest it. Uh, this is members of Stamping Ground. And... That'll be my next video in the next day or so. So, have a good day. I would say have a good weekend, but I don't know when you're watching this. So, have a good day, wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you all soon. Yeah.